What is up guys, it's your boy Swole. I'm here, back with another World of Warcraft video for the Warbit Inn, and today we are talking about leveling up really fast in the Warbit Inn, in patch 11.0.5, using a combination of the current anniversary event that we have, but also time walking dungeons. Now, I just want to talk about time walking dungeons really fast here, because we're going to have access to these every single week, so don't feel like you have to do this today, or like this current week, you can do this so many times, throughout the anniversary event and if you have any characters you haven't leveled up yet now is a perfect time to level those up even if you don't if you have some time left over during the week and you want to level up more characters from start well now is probably the best time to actually level up i'm gonna have a follow-up video to this coming out tomorrow talking about how you can level up up to 85 percent faster during the anniversary event now i'm not going to talk about all those stackable bonuses today but you can actually get up to plus eight 85% experience bonus while you're leveling. Now, today I'm just focusing on the time walking dungeons, and you actually get 10% experience and also reputation by default when you just log in during the event. So you're gonna have 10% by default, and you can get another 10% even further. And I'm going to be scheduling this video for Friday when the Hallows end event is active, where you can get another 10%. So if you just want to do this like a bare bones leveling strategy, then 10% experience bonus from logging in and having this buff, you get another buff for 12 hours for, for completing this quest right here, the um, celebrate good fun, which you can actually do by doing three time walking dungeons, they give you 30% each, so three of them would be 90%, and then you do like you do one daily quest, which is answering a person here about a lore question, that is 8%, and then you kill one world boss, and then you have this quest complete, so you do three dungeons, do one quest, and kill one world boss should be very easy and very fast. This one, once again, gives you another 10% on top for 12 hours only, so you can level up with 10% more experience for 12 hours. Now, when the Hallows end is out, which is going to be when you're watching this video, you can get another further 10% by the throwing like the bonfire, there's like a bonfire, and you can just do some quests or do something around the bonfire, and you will get 10% from that as well. So the Hallows end end event gives you another 10% on top. Now, time walking dungeons. We actually have classic time walking dungeons this week, and the thing is, next week it says that we have time walking dungeons in classic WoW once again. So we have two weeks of regular classic WoW time walking dungeons, and then after that we have the Burning Crusade for two uh, one week, so over here time walking dungeons once again, and this time for Burning Crusade, and then back to classic two more weeks, and then we have Wrath of the Lich King. So it looks like we have two Two weeks of classic, one week of the Burning Crusade, two weeks of classic, one week of wrath, and then two weeks of classic again, and then one week of cataclysm. So they're really trying to give you as many options as possible to do these time walking dungeons, which is absolutely great for leveling. Now, I'm just going to talk about this for a second, but if you want to min-max your tokens, you can actually do this dungeon just once, every single character, for this ancient time warped scroll, and this scroll will give you 500 badges, and some experience, and some gold, and you get this from your first dungeon 100% of the time, so just do one time walking dungeon, and you can then get those scrolls. Now, those um, the badges you get from that, you can actually buy pets with, you can buy mounts, I think, is this the NPC that sells me the mount? Yeah, so so like for me, I'm lacking this mount for example, and that one costs me 5,000 time warp badges. Now I can just do one time walking dungeon right now, on 10 different characters, and get this item, hand that in, and I get this mount. And this quest you actually hand in right here as well in Tanaris, so it's super convenient. Now, before you start just doing any time walking dungeons, you kind of want to pick up two quests. Number one is celebrate good fun for that daily to get the uh, additional buff, but also if you haven't done this quest yet, it will also give you three celebration tokens, the bronze tokens, and you also want to pick up the an original path through time quest, which gives you a timely goodie bag, which has gold item upgrades, like actual gear upgrades for level 80, for example, and also if it's your first time of the week doing this quest, you get three more badges once again, and three more tokens, the bronze celebration tokens, so you want, if, you want, if you want to get those tokens, you can do this and level up a character at the same time, basically hitting two birds, one stone. Now, what I'm going to say here is that when you queue for time walking dungeons, if you're a DPS alone, you will spend, actually, like, not even joking here, you will spend more time in the queue 
than in the dungeons themselves. So I would highly recommend being a healer or a tank if you can for faster queues, or alternatively if you're leveling, definitely do something on the side like questing, um, farming mobs in the open world, farming rares, just do something to use that downtime to your advantage, and if you have a good group in a time walking dungeon, ask them if they want to do another one before they leave. Like before you pull the last boss, just ask them do you want to do another one, and then you queue for one more. Eliminating like either eliminating the queue time or doing something of worth during that queue time will be detrimental to your experiment experience per hour. Like you need to do something with that with that downtime, or the experience per hour goes down way too much. Now, I've been testing out time walking quite a bit today, and I'm going to play some footage in the background of me doing some time walking dungeons right here, so you can see how much the experience bar moves throughout this time walking dungeon, and with the completion of the dungeon as well. Now, for experience per hour, or levels per hour, I am comfortably sitting, like I've leveled up 3 characters today to level 80, from level 73, so like a total of 21 levels, and I can comfortably say it gives you between 4 and 7 levels per hour, depending on your group, and that's just a number from my testing, like you can have different numbers, you can probably push more than 7 levels per hour as well, but basically you're getting about 1 level for every single dungeon you do, so if you can somehow get dungeons down to 6 minutes, and then do 10 dungeons per hour, you're looking at up to 10 levels per hour if you have a good group that can actually do that, but for me, I did not have a pre-made for any of my dungeons today, I've just been queuing up just using the regular prog experience, and on the, not my shaman but my paladin for example, I went from level 74 to level 80 in one hour. That is six levels in one hour, which is not too bad, and I, I was on a DPS as well, so I, first of all I had to sit in a queue for a little bit, but once I found a group, we just stayed together for a long time, and we went from level 74 to level 80 in one hour inside this time walking dungeon. So I'm quite happy, because in the past, like, we had three dungeon, like time walking dungeon events in the Warbit Inn, and they gave no experience. Like, I tried to level up during them, and it was borderline impossible, because the only thing, like, last time the Burning Crusade time walking was around, I did some time walking dungeons in the Burning Crusade, like the, the Blood Furnace and stuff, and they gave you nothing. The only experience you got was boss kills, and also the completion of the dungeon. And this time around, they've actually fixed the experience, so we gain way more experience this time around. Now, before, like, I'm just gonna say this, like, this is a, um, this is a warning, kind of, or a, I don't know what to call it, but basically, the amount of experience you get will be depending on how good your group is, and from my Pug experience today, that varies a lot. Like, you can get down to 3 levels per hour, or even less, or up to 10. Like, the difference between a good and a bad group is more than double. A good group will do more than double the experience per hour than a bad group will, if not even triple. The difference between a good group and a bad group is absolutely insane, and especially because we are doing classic dungeons. Either some people have played the Warbit Inn and has never played classic before, so they have no idea where to go. Like I was in a dire mall run today and the tank had absolutely no clue where to go, so he ended up pulling absolutely everything, looking for the path to take, and I tried to ping on the map and show him where to go and he was just like, nah, I'm just gonna find my own way. So some people have never played these dungeons before, and it's gonna be a learning curve, and then some people have played them before, but they are now like way too used to the Warbit In content, and it's kind of hard to adapt back to classic content. So I'm just gonna say once again, like the, the experience per hour here will be very fluctuating between good and bad, depending on if you get a good group or a bad group. If you have a pre-made that is fantastic, go out there and speed level. Now, once again, I've already gotten over a half a level from this dungeon alone, we're about to complete the dungeon as well very soon, so we can see exactly how much experience we get from the completion part of the dungeon itself, but I'm doing this with only the anniversary buff. I do not have the further 10% from doing the quest itself, and I also do not have the Hallows End event buff, because that becomes available tomorrow or today when you're watching the video, so you can get 20% more experience than I'm currently getting by doing these dungeons. Now, 
I, f I personally feel like leveling might be too fast in the time walking dungeons, in which case you should definitely take advantage of this while you can to make sure you level up the characters you want to level. So for me I have a couple of classes yet that I don't have at level 80, and I kind of want to use this event to get those classes to level 80. Now I say that, I, like the, I don't have a priest or a warrior at level 80, but I have 3 druids at level 80, so I should definitely stop class stacking and get some more um, variety at level 80 myself. So this shaman for example I'm working on getting to level 80, and my priest, and my warrior, and I just got the paladin to level 80 in the clip before this. So yeah, time walking dungeons right now are really good for leveling, and they will get even better as time goes on. Now, like I said, you can get up to 85% additional experience over time with the anniversary event and level up even faster than we currently do. So I'm just going to break down a little bit of how to improve this experience in today's video and have a further breakdown in tomorrow's video. But first of all, you get 10% from the static buff that you will have throughout the event and you can get another 10% from this one right here, a 12 hour buff from a daily quest. So for 12 hours every single day, you can get this buff, but that buff is character specific. So if you have level up a character, finish up getting to level 80, you have to get that buff over again on the next character, which is kind of annoying and kind of weird and don't know how why it's like that, but it is what it is. So that is another 10% from the buff. And starting today when you're watching this video, you also have 10% from Hallow's End, and next weekend you have 10% from Darkmoon Fair, and we're gonna have five days of overlap with Dark. Darkmoon Fair and Hallow's End before the Hallow's End actually ends. So during those five days you can get 40% just from the buffs from the Hallow's End and Darkmoon Fair, like 10% from each, and then 20% from this buff plus the quest you do for the additional 10%. So you can level with 40% additional experience, which is very easy to get, like anyone can get that 40% and level up with that. But once again you can push those numbers even higher, and I'll have a breakdown of that coming out tomorrow. Either way, that's kind of the video today, kind of wanted to talk about uh, how fast this leveling actually is, take advantage of it while you can, but also if you can't do any leveling this week, you don't have any time, don't feel FOMO, we're gonna have time walking dungeons every single week, but um, yeah, there we go, that's it, that's the video, so hopefully you enjoyed the video, good luck on your leveling adventure, and thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it, I'll see you again in the next one very soon.